Good morning, everyone, and thank you for being here. I'm Margaret Leinen, president of the American Geophysical Union. From the availability of clean water to build resilience to climate change, to the earth and space, the earth and space sciences can have significant benefits to nations, states, and communities around the world. That opportunity to help build a more sustainable future through our research it is what draws so many of us to this science. And that's why I am so pleased to be able to introduce today's speaker. In the nation's most populous state that is responsible for 1% of the world's global greenhouse gas emissions, Governor Jerry Brown has been using the power of his office to advance strong climate policies and a com make a commitment to clean energy. Under Governor Brown's leadership, by 2030, the state of California will reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 40% below 1990 levels. As a recent Californian, I clearly moved to the right state. Uh, he has also put the state on a path to generate half of its electricity from renewable sources and to reduce petroleum use in cars and trucks by 50%. We all have a lot to learn from his dedication and his passion. Please join me in welcoming California Governor Jerry Brown. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. We're going to need all that energy and enthusiasm in the battles ahead. So <laughs> keep it up. Don't flag. We got a lot of work to do. Uh, I want to welcome you to California. Uh, you were here last year, I believe, and <laughs> one never knows anymore what the facts are. <laughs> Living in the post-fact world, or the anti-fact world. Anyway, it's good you've come here to California to deal with the question of Earth and, and climate science. The, uh, the time has never been more urgent or your work never more important. The danger is definitely rising. The power of a few to disrupt the world has never been greater. And our financial systems, uh, the few, can wreak untold havoc on the lives of millions. We saw that with the mortgage meltdown just a few years ago. In the field of nuclear weapons, we know in the Cuban Missile Crisis we came to the brink of mass destruction possibly killing hundreds of millions of people. It's something that almost came to be. We know through past history uh, just how close that was. And now with uh, climate change, we're facing another danger. Flat. That's going straight. The power curve is going up. And it's going to tax the creativity and the intelligence and the political collaboration of all of us to bring those two into balance. We know the, the data, and we know what's happening in the world, despite the deniers. Uh, climate is changing, the temperatures are rising, the oceans are becoming more acidified, habitats are under stress. The world is really facing this tremendous danger, and it's not about this or that politician. We're facing far more than one or two or even thousands of politicians. We're facing big oil, we're facing big financial structures that are at odds with the survivability of our world. And it'll be up to you as truth tellers, truth seekers, to mobilize all your efforts to fight back. And we have a good example. Big tobacco was pretty powerful, but they lied and they came uh, a cropper, not just with scientists, but with lawyers. And in California, we got plenty of lawyers. <laughs> so we got the scientists, we got the lawyers, and we're ready to fight. We're ready to defend. Yeah. 
And California is no stranger to this fight. Uh, for a, a long time, we've been fighting efforts to reduce vehicle emissions, to improve our environment, and in recent years, we've taken even more aggressive steps. The California Vehicle Emission Standards became the national standards. California drove the United States. The Obama administration responded to the California Air Resources Board. <clears throat> That's how we got there. So a lot of people say, what the hell are you doing, Brown? You're not a country. Well, <laughs> judged by measures of gross domestic product of over 2.2 trillion, we're the fifth or sixth uh, largest economy in the world. And we got a lot of firepower. We got the scientists, we got the universities, we have the national labs, and we have the political clout and sophistication for the battle. And we will persevere, have no doubt about that. <clears throat> So we have the vehicle mileage standards, we have the zero emission vehicle standards, uh, we have the goal of 50% uh, renewable, we're probably at 28% right now, not even counting nuclear or hydro. Uh, we're making real steps. We ju I just signed a bill on short-lived uh, climate pollutants, uh, such as methane. Uh, we are going to affect we have rules for the agricultural sector, and we got support there, and, and landfills. We're taking the recent rise in methane very seriously. We have the laws, we have the tools of enforcement, and we have the political will. And we will set the stage, we'll set the example, and whatever Washington thinks they're doing, California is the future. <clears throat> I hearken back to that day in 1960 when John F. Kennedy in Los Angeles said that California was the new frontier. Well, we still are the new frontier, and we're pioneering space, we're pioneering honest science, and we're pioneering a politics that is committed to equality and sustainable, uh, sustainability and inclusivity. That's our commitment. We're going to keep it up. So. <clears throat> And we know it isn't very easy. Uh, the measures on, on methane that I signed into law, uh, Breitbart and the other clowns uh, talked about cow farts. That's what they reduce. Everything is reduced from, from uh, you know, seriousness to, to uh, you know, just a, it's a joke. Well, it's not a joke. And uh, this is not about uh, Twitter and 140 characters and the instant uh, proliferation of meaningless news bits. This is about real life. This is about real people, real science, and you're the custodians of that aspect of our lives. You're here to seek truth, to disseminate uh, what results you find, and to modify them based on peer review and pressure. That's different. In politics, we have another game. It's not about truth. It isn't about truth. I don't know what the hell it is about, but uh, <laughs> it's about politics, after all. That's what it's about. And I'm not going to discourse on that, although I know it pretty well. <laughs> I've been doing it a long time. And I enjoy it, by the way. It's not a nice business, but it's a hell of a lot of fun. <laughs> and it's, very, it's profoundly important, because the future of the world is not just depending on you. It's depending on the elected officials all over the world. And so Washington is under stress, but California is still here. We've signed an under two MOU with 200 states, provinces, and countries. We will not stand back. I spoke with the Canadian ambassador yesterday. They're going to stay the course on a carbon price, on meeting climate goals. So we will unite with those 200 states and provinces and countries, with Canada, with China. We will pursue a path of collaboration and bold political advancement, whatever they do in Washington, and eventually the truth will prevail. <clears throat> now some people, some people say that they're gonna turn off the satellites that are monitoring the uh, climate, uh, low earth uh, phenomena, the uh, Landsat and all the various Measure, uh, measuring satellites that we have. Well, 
I remember back in 1978, I proposed a Landsat satellite for California. They called me Governor Moonbeam because of that. I didn't get that moniker for nothing. And if Trump turns off the satellites, California will launch its own damn satellite. We're going to collect that data. Yeah. And we do launch, we do launch private companies are launching satellites right here in California. So we have the laboratories. And by the way, if they start messing with uh, Lawrence Berkeley Lab or uh, Berkeley Livermore, I'm the president of the Board of Regents, I'm going to say keep your hands off. That laboratory is going to pursue good science. And as long as the University of California manages those labs, we're not going to have political interference. We're going to have honest, independent science. You can count on that. By the way, if they start deleting databases, look, we've got a lot of databases in California. We can take a few more. <laughs> we're here. We're here to collaborate, but we're also here to stay uh, on, on, the, on the course. And we know that. I propose to reduce oil consumption in vehicles by 50%. The oil companies knocked down the legislation that would have implemented it. But we keep trying. And bills that I lost one year, we get the next year. So this is not a battle of one day or one election. This is a long-term slog into the future. And you are there, the foot soldiers of change and understanding and scientific collaboration. So. We don't, it's not a time to think uh, a setback here or there is going to slow us down. Uh, often, by the way, when you're moving along at a rather tepid pace, you're not going to get there. When someone comes along and says, OK, let's blow it all up, well, sometimes it wakes us up. Some people need a heart attack to stop smoking. Well, maybe we just got our heart attack, <laughs> and we better start doing the work that it takes to, to really do what it takes to reduce our climate emissions. And it's not uh, some nice rhetoric that's all going to work easy. No, it's expensive. It uh, takes strong changes in business. It has tremendous political obstacles. It's not easy. But well, we proved in California that the economy grows. And it grows in part because of the climate rules that we've adopted. Now, I remember our new Secretary of Energy, he was coming to California and say, uh, Come to Texas, because we have all the jobs in Texas. Well, Rick, I got some news for you. California is growing a hell of a lot faster than Texas. And we, <clears throat> and we got more sun than you have oil. <laughs> and we're going to use it. So don't, don't be worried. All is well. Uh, there's a term that I've always liked. And I have to invoke one Latin term because I'm not a scientist, but I've studied more Latin than you have. <laughs> Reductio ad absurdum. Reduced to absurdity. And when you do that, everybody sees the absurd path you're on. Up till now, things have been a little cloudy in many minds. The effort to reduce to absurdity climate denial will inevitably re re result in its absolute reversal. That's the way things work. And we're not at the point of absurdity yet. But about the time we get there, we're ready to ride the backlash back to sanity, sustainability, and truth. And you're the truth seekers. And that's why scientists of this world unite. You have nothing to lose but your grants, your tenure, and who knows what else. And politicians, all you have to lose is an election. <laughs> but it takes some boldness, some risk taking, but most of all, truth telling and truth seeking. The power of truth is profoundly more uh, effective than the power of rhetoric. Rhetoric comes and rhetoric goes. So we have to get back to the common sense. What do we know? What's real? What's human? Not all the 
uh, the uh, miasma of nonsense coming across the social media channels. You know, because you work at it every day. And I promise you, everything I do in the next couple of years in California, to work with you to bring uh, common sense to the people of America, and together, we're going to make sure that California, as many states who wants to join, other countries, and ultimately Washington itself, will be together as we combat climate change now and into the future. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. I'm going to give it two quick questions yeah. for you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I think that was just what we needed to hear. Uh, uh, Governor Brown has a really tight schedule, but he allowed me to ask a couple questions. And my first one is, um, you know, uh, California is an inspiration to a lot of, uh, of our members, but many of them don't live here. What's your advice to them about what they can do in their home states or their home countries? About 25% of our attendees are from outside the U.S. Well, I say keep, keep writing your papers. Keep disseminating what you learn. And I really believe, and I've seen this over a long period of over 40 years in politics, that truth does win out. And you can't keep fighting reality. So you help generate the understandings and all the different minute projects that you're a part of. And we join together. And California will continue its support of research, its support of conferences, its support of uh, efforts like the under two MOU. We're not isolated. We're a state where most of the world's leaders come out. They come to Silicon Valley almost like pilgrims to Lourdes. They want to drink the water in Palo Alto and think that <laughs> they can turn their respective countries into the innovative uh, place that Silicon Valley is. But the reality is so many people come here, and I meet with them, and we join together. So California is a, uh, is a pivot point uh, that we can uh, leverage uh, what we are with others. And wherever you are, you can contribute to that. The point is not to uh, lose faith, to get discouraged, or to get isolated, or to let people be picked off one after another. That's why I say we have the lawyers. And if anyone in Washington starts picking on researchers, you can be sure you'll have a friend in California, in our attorney general, and all the, pe all the uh, uh, legal talent we can bring to bear. So it's about working boldly and working together and not in any way uh, underestimating the power of who you are and what you can do. One of my colleagues uh, that was in Marrakesh uh, earlier uh, uh, last month uh, was just totally disheartened when a graduate student in climate came up to them and said to, after uh, the election, do you think I should change my career path? And I think that it's, uh, it's an example of some of the, um, the fear and the, the uh, sort of loss of heart. Um, are you optimistic about the future? And what, do you, what would you say to that young student? Well, I, I am optimistic. As a matter of fact, uh, I'd say climate science has gotten a lot more interesting. You know, one of the uh, vices in the spiritual life is called tepidity. We've had a lot of tepid climate fighters or uh, climate, uh, um, climate people who are not really telling the full truth and it's been trimmed and it hasn't been as sharp. And uh, there is a, uh, a paradoxical benefit when someone takes to an absurd length a completely erroneous position, because that then unmasks the error 
in such a vivid way that it allows everyone else to refute, to join together, and to be emboldened to move forward. So no, I'm not discouraged. I can't think of anywhere else to be than in climate science today. Fights are fun, and this is fight is big, and it's going to be attractive, and it takes a lot of smart people. And I would say there's a lot smarter people in this room than there are in the climate denial community. So I have great confidence. Thank you, Governor Brown. Our existing patriarchal society has proven itself to be incompatible with the laws of life and love. The major systems governing our lives are collapsing all around us. We have exhausted the planet's resources. Having brought ourselves to the brink of planetary destruction, is there still the possibility of a new beginning? Despite all the devastation, the Earth has an incredible capacity for regeneration. Eroded wasteland can quickly transform into fertile landscape. Our planet can supply the global population with enough food, water, and energy. If we no longer follow the laws of capital, but the logic of nature. Countless scientists, inventors, groups, and movements worldwide are developing new strategies for providing food and energy, free schools, alternative economic systems, and ways of healing. What then holds us back from stepping into the future? Today's human world not only fails due to our mismanaged economic and political systems, it also fails due to something within the human being. The history of war has left a collective trauma in us all. It is this trauma that has allowed our social coexistence to be permeated by mistrust, jealousy, lies, and hatred. There would be no war, no exploitation, no competition, no capitalism without this collective structure of fear. A humane future is rooted in trust among people. Trust is not only a psychological, but above all, a political term, the most revolutionary of all. Because we have to renew our entire societal system to enable sustainable structural trust. Trust develops in communities based on transparency and truth. Trust makes new love between man and woman possible. Trust leads to the deep reconciliation of the human being with himself. Where there is trust, all images of the enemy cease to exist. People can no longer be instigated to act against one another. Only with trust can love grow and peace become a reality. Our fellow creatures, even the smallest, have the same right to live as we do. We all belong to this one family of life. Peace is the original trust in life. Modern sciences are directing our consciousness to the wholeness of life on Earth thereby unexpected possibilities for revolutionizing and healing the planet open up. As soon as the new matrix of trust and cooperation is manifested as concrete models in only a few places, field powers of peace will spread in the global information system. A wave of planetary renewal runs around the earth we invite you 
to collaborate for building a new world based on trust. I would love to do another song for you. Let me do this one. Wacken Jim Stoltz. A song is like a thread woven in the string, twisted and tied to everything. A time has shown nothing stands alone, all nature in it sings. The clouds build up and the rain falls down, feeds the rivers ocean bound. Each wayward stream flows forth a dream, an endless dancing song. It's a circle of life for a living. It's a circle every which way. There's a lesson there for the given. So go on and give it away. It's a planet of blue with islands of green. Shares this life and all it means. Each death and birth brings to this earth a whole circle coming clean. It's a circle of life for a living. It's a circle every which way. There's a lesson there for the given. So go on and give it away. a seed and away she blows or where she stops and nobody knows until she's bound to a little piece of ground and the life within her grows it's a circle of life for a living it's a circle every which we but there's a lesson there for the given to go on and give it away it's a circle of life for a living it's a circle every which we and there's a lesson there for the given So go on and give it away